everyone. We are here live at the Korg NAM booth with Kevin Oneno Hastings, musician and DJ, who just gave an awesome performance at our booth. We're going to ask him a couple of questions about his career. So thanks for being here. So how did you get your start in music? Uh, well, I mean, it's such a long story, obviously, but I'll keep it short. Uh, my parents were both musicians, so I grew up playing music. And ever since I was about five or six years old, I've been a classically trained piano player. And then uh, when I first moved to LA, I was about 18 years old and I went to a college down there and that got me plugged into the music scene. And then my first professional gig was just through auditioning and going to callbacks and eventually landing a gig with Liz Fair. And so I played with her for about uh, six months or so. Then I toured with an MTV artist named Cheyenne Kimball. And then after that, I did an indie rock gig with a guy named uh, David Martin. And then one day I got a phone call for a random artist named Rihanna who had a new single called Umbrella and they needed a band to put together to take this single all around the world. So after that gig, a lot really changed for me. And it's, those are just the bullet points. I mean, there's a lot more info to be told in there, but yeah, that's how I got it. That's awesome. I know you play our King Core keyboard. You're a big synth guy. Are there any other instruments that you play or you're looking to play, wanting to learn? Uh, guitar has always been one of my favorite instruments, and I write a lot of my keyboard stuff based on guitar riffs and things like that. Uh, the other the other instrument I would love to play more is drums. That's why when I produce music, I usually start with drums first, and then I layer in keyboards and lyrics and melodies. But drums are just that foundational thing for me. I, I really love drums. so. You mentioned Rihanna, you've toured with some high profile artists. What is a day in the life like on tour? <laughs> it's crazy and chill all at the same time. Uh, I, my favorite story to tell people is the first time I ever went to Paris, France, I actually was, it, well actually I should say the first four times I went to Paris, France, I would never actually got to see the Eiffel Tower. But then the fifth time I was there, I was there for like a whole week and I got to see the Louvre, the Eiffel Tower, all of these different places. So when you're on tour, you either are really busy and you don't have any time for anything, or you end up in really cool cities and you have like six days of nothing to do. So it's, it's really extreme, one or the other. So if you weren't a musician, what would you be doing right now? I actually have a meditation course on my website, which is imoneno.com. And you can find it there. It's a 21 day course designed to help people learn how to meditate and how to build a daily practice of meditation. So yeah, yoga and meditation is probably my largest hobby outside of music. So next year, instead of a live performance, we're gonna do a live yoga session, right? Yeah, absolutely. Everyone's gonna meditate and then we'll play electronic dance music. <laughs> Perfect, that's good. So uh, we know you gave a great performance on the King Korg. What are your favorite features about the synth? Oh man, it's, it's one of the most solid keyboards that I have ever had the privilege to play. And I, I usually travel around Los Angeles quite a bit. I now live in Nashville. And when I have to uh, take my keyboard with me, it is just super easy to transport. It's very compa compact, but the sound that comes out of it is huge. And so every single time I play this keyboard live, people come over and talk to me about it. They just, they can't get enough of how it sounds. And I'm the same, like I'm just a fan of that keyboard. I really enjoy it, so. Great. So last question, uh, do you have any advice for up and coming musicians looking to make it in the industry? Uh, practice, practice, and practice. A lot of it comes down to skill, but at the same time, it comes down to being a good person, being a professional person, like showing up on time, being there with a positive attitude and doing your homework before you get there. Um, but really, it just comes down to practice your craft and become undeniably good at what you do and then apply yourself. So take it out of your bedroom or out of your studio, go into the real world and show your talent to people and then network and get into conversations. Uh, but I would say first and foremost, practice. Have a skill and have a passion that you want to share with somebody. And those people that are interested in it, they'll be attracted to it. Great. Well, that's it. Thanks for coming by and great job.